So yesterday we talked about inductive and deductive reasoning. So does anybody remember how I remember deductive reasoning? Detective. Good. It's like detective work. Going and searching through things. Right? Okay. So we're going to go to page, what did I say, 48? 46. Is this on 46? Perfect. Okay, so a conditional statement. A conditional statement is a statement that can be written in the form if P, <coughs> then Q. So if you see these two words, if and then, it's a conditional statement. So where P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. It sounds really complicated, but it's not. Uh, a conditional statement would be if my heart is beating, then I'm alive. Right? That would be a conditional statement. So, for example, in the conditional statement, if 3x minus 5 equals 13, then x equals 6. If I know that this is true, then this must be true. The hypothesis is the beginning part, and the conclusion is the final part. Most of the properties of equality can be written as conditional statements. You can use these properties to solve an equation like 3x minus 5 equals 13, to prove that x equals 6. So let's just briefly go over these properties. I know you have them in your book. I covered them up because I'm going to write down examples. So the addition property of equality. Addition property of, pro of equality is just something like this. If 2 equals 2, couldn't I just add 3 to both sides and it would still be true? Subtraction property. Same thing. If 2 equals 2, couldn't I add a negative 1 to both sides and it still be the same? Multiplication property. If 2 equals 2, couldn't I multiply both sides by 3? Division property. We can use this one now. I think you guys are getting the idea of it, right? If A equals B, then if I divide both sides by C, it's still equal. <coughs> Reflexive property. Reflexive property just means 2 equals 2. Symmetric property. How many of you does it bug? If I have 4, sorry, let me rewrite this. If I have 4 equals 2x minus 1, how many of you like to switch that around? I do. It bugs me when it's on the other side. Well, that's the symmetric property. I can rewrite it as 2x minus 1 equals 4. It's the same thing, right? Just switch. That's symmetry. Transitive property. Geometry students love the transitive property when they are writing proofs. I always get that. If it's something that they don't know, I always say, oh, because of transitive property. Okay, transitive property would be something like this. I'm going to write it here because it's a little bit longer. So if I were to say 4 plus 2 equals 6, and 6 equals 5 plus 1, are you following so far? Then 4 plus 2 must equal 5 plus 1. See how like the middle guy goes away? If Abby's my sister, and Abby has a sister named Jeanette. Isn't my sister Jeanette? <coughs> right? I'm trying to take out the whole step thing, right? But if you think about it, okay. Substitution property. This one simply says, for instance, if I have 5 plus x equals 7. Couldn't I rewrite this as saying 2 plus 3 plus x equals 7? Sometimes it's helpful. See how 5 is substituted by 2 plus 3? It's the same thing, but we've just decided to use two numbers to represent one number over again. So that would be an example of substitution. All right, any questions so far? Everybody's good? Fantastic. Okay, use deductive reasoning to solve the equation. 
So basically, we're going to do the same thing that you've done in Algebra 1, but we're just going to write our statement. Some of you, if you had Algebra 1 here, you probably did this already in last year's class. So to get from 14 equals 3x minus 4 to 18 equals 3x, what did they do to get from here to here? Good. You added 4 to both sides. So that property would be the addition property of equality. Then what? To get from 18 equals 3x to 6 equals x. Good job. Divide by, divide by what? 3. Divide both sides by 3. And then what about from here? 6 equals x. They changed it to x equals 6. And you just switched it around, right? Which is symmetry, which we have right here. The symmetric property. It looks like I crossed it off. So switching it around is the symmetric property. All right, so let's do this one together. We went from 9 equals 17 minus 4x. What would be my first step? What? Subtract 17 in here? So 9 minus 17. What property is that? Subtraction. How do we, what would be my next step? So we have 9 minus 17, but I don't want to write 9 minus 17. I'd rather combine those two. What would I get? Negative 8. That should actually be a step as well. What did I just do? What property is that? When I go from 9 minus 17, I, I replace it with 8. I heard it. Substitution. And then to go from negative 8 equals negative 4x, what will be my next step? Divide by negative 4, which would give me what? 2. So that's decision property of equality. And finally, x equals <coughs> 2, and that would be the symmetric property of equality. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. Write each statement as a conditional. All zebras belong to the genus Equus. Is that how we pronounce that? Equus? Equus? All right. All zebras belong to Equus. How, what does conditional mean again? If and then. I need an if then statement. So how could I rewrite this? If something, then something else. Yes? Yes, sir? You're, you're actually making it more complicated than it needs to be. If Not if all zebras. What is this? No. Think about that. Did you hear what he said? He said, if they belong to Equus, then they're zebras. Is everything that belongs to Equus, is it a zebra? So do that in the other way. Exactly. If you're, so if I take this part out, right? If you're a zebra, then you belong to Equus. <coughs> Make sense? It seems harder than it is, right? It's a little intimidating because we don't normally, normally talk like that, correct? All right, so the bill will pass if it gets two-thirds of the vote. Sometimes you get lucky in these, and the if or the then is already in the sentence. You just got to rearrange it. What do you think? Yes. 
If it gets two thirds of the vote, so we had it right here, right? If if it gets two thirds. of the vote, then the bill will pass. Use deductive reasoning to solve the equation 3 minus 4x equals negative 5. So we're going to do the same thing with an algebraic equation. So what would I say next? If 3 minus 4x equals negative 5, what can we do next? We'll do the next step. Subtract what? Subtract 3 from both sides. What would I get if I subtracted 3 from both sides? Well, specifically, what would I get on this side? Good. Negative 4x equals negative 8. What did, how would I um, justify that step? I heard it. Good. Subtraction. Here's my little abbreviation. PO, property of equality. Subtraction, property of equality. <coughs> Don't use sub PO, because what's sub PO? Substitution. So you don't ever want to abbreviate sub. You could abbreviate multiplication. You can multiply, I mean, you can abbreviate addition, um, division, but substitution and subtraction, you don't want to abbreviate those. Yes, sir. Substitute. It's just a little bit too close. You wouldn't want me to mark it wrong, and you don't catch that I shouldn't mark it wrong. You know what I mean? So I would just be careful. All right, next, what would I do? Good. What property would I just use? Division. Division Co. So if I divide it by negative 4 to both sides, what would I have? X equals 2. Good. All right, let's identify the properties, kind of like the inverse of what we just did. If X equals 2, then 2X equals 4. What do they do to get from if to then? Say it again. to get from this, if this, you have to start with the hypothesis, right? If x equals 2, and there, we're missing a little piece in here, and we apply this property, then 2x equals 4. What property would you have to apply to get to 2x equals 4? How do I get from x to 2x? How do I get from 2 to 4? <coughs> multiply. If I multiply both sides of the equation by 2, wouldn't I get 2x equals 4? Good. Yeah. So this would be multiplication co. What about 5 equals 3a? If 5 equals 3a, then 3a equals 5. Symmetric. Symmetric po. If t equals 4, then 5t plus 7 must equal 27. <coughs> to me, this one's a little bit more vague. What? You know? Not transitive because you'll see why it's not transitive. Give me a second. It's actually, it's substitution. I don't, I think this is a poor example. What it's saying is if you, sub if you substituted 4 into there, wouldn't that be 20? And then 20 plus 7 would be 27. So in order for this to be true, you'd have to substitute t in for 4. Make sense? It's not, it's not written very well. Don't like it, but that's okay. Don't have to like everything, right? 
So if 9 equals 4x and 4x equals m, then 9 equals m. Which one's this one? Transitive. Yeah, I said I'd get to it in a second. So if 9 equals 4x and 4x equals m, then it's like you're taking eliminating the middleman and 9 equals m. If I know this is this and this is this, then they must equal each other. Questions? So this is transitive. All right, let's keep going. Using postulates about segments and angles. So one thing that we have to be really, really careful about this year is that this book assumes that you've had common core throughout your entire education. All right? There's really no way around it. So it's my job to try and bridge those gaps. So for instance, it says, recall the two angles whose measures add up to 180 degrees are supplementary angles. I don't know, I can't remember back from my seventh grade days. You might have heard the term supplementary angle, but in Common Core, you now, you would have already heard supplementary angles in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, algebra one, and now geometry. So they are just assuming that you already know that. Okay? So let's highlight that. So two angles who add up to 180. <coughs> are supplementary. So for instance, I have two angles here. I have angle 4 and I have angle 3 and when I add them together they make 180 degrees. A straight line. The following theorem shows one type of supplementary angle pair called a linear pair. A linear pair is special because it's a pair of adjacent angles. Adjacent. Does anybody know what adjacent means? Yes, Alex. Right? I, I like that. That's perfect. Right next to each other. So a linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles. So angle 3 and 4 are right next to each other, so they're adjacent. Okay, the definition continues. A linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. Okay, let's talk about opposite rays. Let me change my color. Opposite rays. Here's your opposite rays. Here's one. And let's do orange. And here's the other one. These are opposite rays. Opposite rays that have a common endpoint. See that? One ray going in this direction, one ray going in this direction. So it kind of makes sense. The angles have non-common sides. So if this is angle 3, does the green part of angle 3 have anything to do with angle 4? No. The green part of angle 3 has nothing to do. That's why they call it a non-common side. It does not have anything in common. And the orange part of angle 4 has nothing in common with angle 3. But if you talk about angle 3 and angle 4 together, these are opposite rays because they have a common endpoint and they're going in opposite directions. Okay? Is that all we have in here? Non-common side. Yes. So this, let me change that. Actually, I don't want it to be solid. So this one and this one are both non common sides or opposite rays. They go fast? Moving on? Okay, so you can use linear pair, the linear pair theorem 
as well as the segment addition postulate and angle addition postulate to find missing values and expressions. So we're going to use the postulate of, which one is this one called? Which one do you think we're going to use here? Linear pair theorem, segment addition postulate, or ang angle addition postulate? We're going to use segment addition because we're talking about a segment. Okay? So given, I'm given that RT, let's highlight RT, RT, this whole thing right here, by the way, this little mark right here and a little mark right here, that's a way of showing distance. So it's saying, I'm saying from here all the way to here is 5x minus 12. And that's what they gave us, right? RT, segment RT, is equal to 5x minus 12. All right, so if we use the segment addition postulate, it needs more highlighting, it says that RS, which is right here, plus ST, which is right here, is equal to all of RC. <coughs> so if it's, that's true, couldn't I substitute? It says RS is also equal to X plus 2, so I'm going to substitute X plus 2. And it says right here from S to T is 3X minus 8, so I'm going to substitute ST with 3X minus 8. And because of segment addition postulate, I know if I add both of those together, I'm going to get 5x minus 12. And now it's just a simple algebraic equation, correct? That you should all be familiar with. 1x plus 3x is a total of 4x's. 2 and negative 8 makes negative 6. If we solve that, we get 6 equals x. Question? Moving right along. Do you see how this assignment is going to be a lot easier in that first one, math tutor? Yeah? Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's do this one. Somebody found an error in the last class. They said, Mrs. Muller, it says 5x plus 15 up there, but in our book it says 15x minus 10. So the beauty of technology is that I can just copy it and just cover it. There, I'll fix it. All right, I'm going to change my highlighter. All right, so given that the measure of angle RFT, R, that was horrible. It's much easier to do it if I not there. RFT, the measure of RFT equals 15x minus 10. I'm going to use, tell me, which postulate am I going to use? Good job. Angle addition postulate. So if the measure of angle RST, what would it equal? Measure of RST would equal the measure of what? All of RST is equal to the measure of something plus something. Fantastic. So I've got this angle, R, S, T, R, S, T, plus, somebody say it for me? P, good job, P, S, T. If we add those two together, we should get our S, T. Right, let me substitute for me. 15x minus 10, that's my angle RST. What would I substitute for angle RSP? Good job, x plus 25. And what would I substitute for PST? Excellent, 5x plus 10. So if I were to now substitute both of them put together, right, if I have an x and I have five more x's, how many x's do I have total? 6x plus? 35. Now we skip a couple steps in our head like they have here. I know if I subtract 6x's from both sides and add 10x's, how many x's would I have total on this side? 9x's would equal how much? 
Can you do it in your head? 45. If 9x is this 45, how much is 1x? Good job. Questions? We're already at 25 minutes. This is a long video. Ready? It's a good thing people can fast forward me, right? All right, so let's discuss it. The linear pair theorem uses the terms opposite rays as well as adjacent angles. Write a definition for each of these terms. Compare your definitions with your classmates. All right, you guys tell me, how could we, how could we describe opposite rays? How could I describe, I don't want a definition, tell me how you would describe opposite rays. Opposite rays are what? Alex? Perfect. Opposite rays go in opposite directions. I'm going to add one thing to it. Go in opposite directions with, what do they have in common? Good job. With a common end point. <coughs> All right. There's one. Adjacent angles. I would describe adjacent angles as having a common What do adjacent angles have in common? They have non-common sides, but what do they have in common? Here's an angle and here's an angle, and they're adjacent. What do they have in common? Good, I heard it. They have a ray. They have a common ray. Adjacent angles have a common ray, and they're next to each other. So opposite rays have a common endpoint. Adjacent angles have common have a common ray. <laughs> Questions so far? You guys are doing a good job because this is kind of a lot of information that's just being delivered to you, right? Okay, your turn. Two angles, L, M, N. Whenever they start talking like this, I read the whole thing first and start making sense of what I know and I start drawing a picture. So two angles, and this is going to be a lot of information in a very short period of time. Two angles, LMN and NMP, form a linear pair. The measure of LMN is twice the measure of NMP. Find LMN, or the measure of LMN. So pieces of information in there that I need to pull out. Where do I need to pull out? What you hear in there that sounded important? What? Two angles. I've got two angles. They're a linear pair. What does that mean? Don't tell me the definition. Tell me what it means to be a linear pair. What do I know about two angles if they're a linear pair? They're next to each other. There's more to it just that makes them, because if they're just next to each other, why wouldn't we just call them adjacent? So there's more to it. They are adjacent, but there's more to a linear <coughs> pair. They're, they have opposite rays, exactly. More to it. What? They have a common ray. Fantastic. You're missing one piece. One important piece. There's a, that's, you might as well have told me exactly what I want to know, but in a different way. They're supplementary. What does that mean? That's what I want to hear. They add up to 180 degrees. So a linear pair adds up to 180 degrees. So at two angles, they're a linear pair. 
what else about this right here is important to me before now the actual labeling of this doesn't matter to me because until I draw a picture I can't make sense of what LMN and NMP are. You know what I mean without a picture? So what else in here is something that is of importance to me? Yes. Twice. One of them is twice the measure of the other one. Twice as big. One twice as big. So let's draw a picture. What should I start with? What? A line. A line that's 180 degrees, right? So I'm going to draw myself a line. And I know it's a linear pair. That means I've got two angles, right? And one of the angles is, what's the other piece of information? One that's twice of the size. So when I draw this, aren't I going to make one angle look smaller than the other one? You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to draw this. Does that look like twice the size? No. So we want to adjust it somehow, right? We'd like to make it more like, what do you think? Yeah? So one is twice the size of the other. I don't think that's pretty accurate, but it doesn't really matter. All right, let's label. Which one is twice the size? LNN or NMP? LNN. So shouldn't I label this side LNN? Okay, so let's do that. L M N. Here's another thing about common core. See this? <coughs> right there, your turn. So common core expects you guys, I should just be like, turn it over to you. Okay, guys, do this one. But you're not used to thinking on your own. You're used to tell me how to do it, tell me the steps, and I'll do one, right? So right now I'm modeling for you how I would pull the pieces of this apart and think about it. In the next few weeks, I'm going to expect you guys to start doing that, okay? So I'm trying to model for you what I want you to be able to do. Read something and pull pieces out of it. Okay, so... I've got linear pair, I've got two angles, I've got twice the measure. If this is L, M, N, I only need one more point to make it N, M, P. So there's N, M, P. Okay. I want you guys to try this on your own now. How can I figure out the measure of these angles? Specifically, it wants me to find the bigger one two ways to do it. I'll give you a hint. What piece of information do we know up here for sure? We may not know how much this one is, and we may not know how much this one is, but what do I know about both of them together? Okay, so we'll say it's two times. This one's two times the measure of this one. It's going to equal, perfect, it's going to equal 180 degrees. Okay, and now if we talk about what do we not know? What do I not know up here? I don't know the measure of this one, and I don't know the measure of this one, but I do know whatever this one is, this one's twice as big. We have something enough we use when we don't know something. To use a variable. Okay? When I don't know it, don't I use a variable? So what could I put in place of this question mark? X. That means I don't know. And what could I put in place of this question mark? 2X. Or 2 times X would look like 2X. Two X's. Now try it on your own. All right. So I know there is a few of you that got this. If I have one X and I have two more X's, <coughs> how many X's do I have total? So this angle, just like if I were to say the measure of this angle, LMN, plus the measure of this angle, and MP. 
totals 180, then couldn't I substitute LMN for 2x and NMP with x and that we equal 180? And you guys all know how to do that, right? What's 2x is plus 1x? 3x is equals 180. If 3x is 180, how much is 1x? If this angle is 60, what's this angle? Check this out. If this is 2x's, couldn't you split it in half and make 3x's? Wouldn't they all be the same? And then I would just say, well, if it's 180 degrees and each one's the same, wouldn't I just split it in three? Now, that's what makes my teaching style a little bit different. This is traditional right here. But if you drew me a picture like this, if I saw this picture on a test, <coughs> this right here, with, where is it? With this and this, and you said to me, X, 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 60, 60, 60. Didn't you just use logic and all the properties of geometry to show me that these two together equal 120? Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can just pull this down here. Maybe change the color of it so that we know that it's not the traditional. I have should be able to change the color. Why is it not letting me? Alrighty. I will highlight it. Next best thing, right? This is an alternate version. Because this is what I'm going to say. Okay, any questions? All right, let's move on. All right, normally I would stop here. We only have a few minutes. We can get through this tomorrow a little bit more. Let's start back up here and explain three tomorrow. And I'm going to try and get on computers tomorrow with you. All right, good job, guys.